the reenactment of the forming of the UNIAC of government in August 1920. So everybody come on in, come on in, get close. Family, this is Strictly Garvey business we're dealing with. And we gotta know about this, black people, we gotta know about what the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey did for all of us. Marcus Garvey and the founding parent body of the UNIACL. It wasn't Marcus by himself, but he had a lot of conscious brothers and sisters around him, and we thank those ancestors too, because without all of our ancestors, we wouldn't be here today. We stand on their shoulders. We appreciate love them so much. So come on in, draw near. UNIA Executive Division 421 officers, please come in up on the stage. Brothers and sisters, what we're gonna begin now. Do we have our volunteer, Sister Tanya? Yes. Sister in the pink? I forget her name again. Come on in there. Do you love Garvey? Yes, sir. Woo! You love Marcus Garvey? Yes. Say race first. Race first. One God. One God. One aim. One, aim. One destiny. One no, brothers and sisters, the UNIACL is the only organization that is universal for all African people. There's no other universal or worldwide organization that has been ever created for all Africans at home and abroad, except for the UNIACL. So brothers and sisters, we've got some important things coming up right now. What happened in 1920, August 1920? As we begin now the reenactment. As we begin our reenactment, there's five things that every government that was formed in modern times has done. When I say modern times, I'm talking about the last thousand years. Every government formed in the last thousand years had to do these five things. Come on over in the center, and let's put our hands together for our uh, sister Erica and brother Troy, who will be holding the banner. And this says, August 1st, 1920. August 1st, 1920, brothers and sisters, because Marcus Garvey reached into the United States on March 23rd, 1916. And at that time, the UNIA membership was only 400 brothers and sisters in the UNIA. And Marcus Garvey, between the time of 1916 to 1920, the UNIA membership grew from 400 to over 10 million members worldwide. And they didn't have internet. And they didn't have Babylon media or social media or Facebook or none of that. They didn't even have the internet. And they were able to unite our people. Over 10 million brothers and sisters gathered together. So when the UNIA membership reached up to 10 million, half was in the United States, about 5 million, and the other half was in countries around the world. Louisiana was a state that had the most divisions. In Louisiana, they had 74 UNIA divisions. And to be a division of the UNIA in the 1920s, you had to have a minimum of 500 members. Most UNIA division had into the thousands of members. So imagine, in one state, Louisiana, over 74 UNIA divisions alone in that state. In the South, they had most of the UNIA divisions throughout the South of America. In the North, they had fewer divisions, but they had the big divisions in New York and Chicago. One New York division had over 40,000 members, and it was one of the biggest UNIA divisions. So what the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey and our ancestors did 
They, cost, they called the first Negro Peoples of the World Convention. And it was held in Harlem, New York. The opening day was at Madison Square Garden. And what our ancestors did is five things that has to be done by international law to form a government. The first thing is the plebiscite. What the plebiscite is, brothers and sisters, is a public declaration of individuals who want to be part of their own government. But during those days, Madison Square Garden could only hold 8,000 people. And you had to have a minimum of 20,000 people to publicly declare their wish and desire to be part of their own government. So what Marcus Garvey did, he ushered in the first 8,000 and they said the plebiscite. And then he ushered them out. And then he ushered the next 8,000 in and they did the plebiscite. And then he ushered them out. And then he ushered in the third 8,000 brothers and sisters and they did the plebiscite. And it's a total of over 24,000 brothers and sisters who publicly declared their desire to be part of their own government. So I would like to bring the UNIA ACL Division 421 historian, Brother Eric Majet Jr. And he's going to read to you the original plebiscite that was done by our ancestors on August 1st, 1920. I asked many people in the UNIA if they could find a copy of the original plebiscite. Nobody could do it. But when I asked our division historian, Brother Eric, he found it. I wanted to invite you to visit his table because he collects historical artifacts on our people, on Marcus Garvey, and a lot of great African leaders. So brothers and sisters, come on in close because we're gonna repeat the plebiscite. What he's gonna do first He's going to read the original plebiscite, and after, he's going to do a plebiscite that we're going to all partake in. And this is the first requirement by international law to set up a government. Every government that was formed, they had to first declare publicly that they want to be part of their own government. So let's put our hands together for Division 421 historian, Brother Eric Majit Jr. Good evening, everybody. It starts off, we want all men to know that we shall maintain and contend for the freedom and equality of every man, woman, and child of our race with our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. We believe that these rights be justly ours and proper for the protection of the Negro race at large. And because of this belief, we on behalf of the 400 million Negroes of the world do pledge herein the sacred blood of the race in defense. We hereby subscribe our names as the guarantee of the truthfulness and faithfulness hereof. In the presence of Almighty God, on the 13th day of August, in the year of our Lord, 1920. Ashe. 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 We have our updated version for 2018. And in the honor and tradition of our ancestors and our forefathers of the UNIA, we want all men to know that we shall maintain and contend for the freedom and equality of every man, woman, and child of our race with our lives and our fortunes and our sacred honor. On this second part, when I get down to the bottom where it says I, I want you to recite your name out loud. We believe that these rights be justly ours and proper for the protection of, our, of the black race at large. And because of this belief, we, on behalf of all the black people of the world, do pledge here the sacred blood of our race in defense. I, Eric Majid, hereby subscribe my name as a guarantee of the truthfulness and faithfulness hereof in the presence of Almighty God on the 18th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2018. Ashe. Awesome, awesome. Let's put our hands together for Division 421 historian, Brother Eric Majet Jr. And that was the plebiscite. And that was August 1st, 1920. And brothers and sisters, the UNIACL convention 
started in August 1st, August 1920. And this year is the 98th, 98 years our people has been meeting in the black government. This year is the 61st international convention and it's going on as we speak right now in Jamaica. It started August 12th to August 19th. And because we're a world government, the convention can take place any place in the world. It just so happened it's returning back to Jamaica this year for the 61st International Convention. So we want to send big ups to the UNIA family now in Jamaica. Hopefully they're seeing us and hearing us. And we pray that everything is going well at the 61st International Convention. Today we're reenacting the convention from 1920. So the first thing was the plebiscite. The second thing that has to be done by international law to form a government is you have to have a declaration. Everybody knows about Babylon Declaration, right? We all heard about that. But have you heard about the Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World? It's online. You can Google search it. And this was August 13th, 1920. Troy, move over. So, I have a special sister for you. Move over back to the side, Joel. And this sister is Division 421 Executive Secretary. Troy? And this sister has been studying the Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World. It's 54 declarations, 54 grievances that our ancestors had filed. And it was August 13th, 1920, the Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World was released. And these 54 declarations is the words of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. So if you want to know about Garvey, listen carefully and closely to these declarations, each of them. It's going to take about five minutes to go through. But I want you to put your hands together now for Division 421 Executive Secretary, Sister Felicia as she will recite the Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World to us. Sister Felicia, how are you feeling today? Okay, do you need me to hold the mic or you want to hold the mic? Okay, listen carefully. Thank you everybody for being here. Okay, I will be reciting all 54 Declaration of Rights, so listen up. These are your rights as the Negro, Negro peoples of the world. This will be our rights. Uh, number one, be it known to all men that whereas all men are created equal and entitled to the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And because of this, we, the duly elected representatives of the Negro peoples of the world, invoking the aid of the just and almighty God, do declare all men, women, and children throughout the world free citizens, and do claim them as free citizens of Africa, the motherland of all Negroes. Number two, that we believe in the supreme authority of our race and all things racial, that all things created and given to man as a common possession, that there should be an equitable distribution and apportionment of all such things in consideration of the fact that we as a race are now deprived of those things that are morally and legally ours. We believe it right that those things should be acquired and held by whatsoever means possible. Number three, that we believe the Negro, like any other race, should be governed by the ethics of civilization and therefore should not be deprived of any of those rights or privileges common to other human beings. Number four, we declare that Negroes, wheresoever they form a community amongst themselves, should be given the right to elect their own representatives, to represent them in legislature, court of law, or such institutions as may exercise control over that particular community. Number five, we assert that the Negro is entitled to even-handed justice before our court of law and equity in whatever country he may be found and when this is denied him because of his race or color, 
Such denial is an insult to the race and should be resented by the entire body of Negroes. Number six, we declare it unfair and prejudicial to the rights of Negroes where they exist in considerable number to be judged by to be judged by a jury composed entirely of an alien race, but in all such cases, members of our race are entitled to representation on the jury. Number seven, we believe any law or practice that tends to deprive any African of his land or the privilege of free citizenship within his country is unjust and immoral and no native should respect any such law or practice. Number eight, we declare taxation without representation unjust and tyrannous, and there should be no obligation on the part of the Negro to obey the levy of tax in which he is excluded and denied representation because of his race and color. Number 10, we believe all men should live in peace one with the other. Number 10, we believe Notice. We believe all men are entitled to common human respect and that our race should in no way tolerate any insults to interpret to mean disrespect to our race and color. Number 11, we deprecate the use of the term nigger as applied to Negroes and demand the word Negro be written with a capital N. Number 12, we believe that we believe that Negro should adopt all available means to protect itself against barbarous practices inflicted upon him because of color. Number 13, we believe in the freedom of Africa for all the Negro peoples of the world and by the principle Europe for the Europeans and Asia for the Asiatics. We also demand Africa for the Africans Africa at home for Africans. and abroad. Africa for Africa. Number 14, we believe in the inherent and right of the Negro to possess itself of Africa and that his possession of same shall not be regarded as any infringement or any claim or purchase made by any race or nation. Number 15, we strongly condemn the cupidities of those nations of the world who by open aggression or secret schemes have seized the territory and exhaustible natural wealth of Africa. And we place on record our most solemn determination to reclaim the treasures and possessions of the vast continent of our forefathers. Number 16. Uh, I want you to know she's not reading it. She's <laughs> taking it from our head. We believe all men should live in peace one with the other, but when races and nations provoke the ire of other races and nations to infringe upon those rights, war becomes inevitable and the attempt in any way to free oneself or protect one's rights our heritage becomes justifiable. Number 17, whereas the lynching by burning, hanging, or any other means of human beings is a barbarous practice, and a shame to civilization, a shame and a disgrace to civilization, we declare any country guilty of such atrocities outside the pale of civilization. Number 18, we protest against the atrocious crime of whipping, flogging, or overworking the native tribe of Africa and Negroes everywhere. And these methods should be abolished and all available means should be taken to prevent a continuous of such brutal practices. Number 19, we protest against the atrocious practice of shaving the heads of Africans, especially African women or individuals of Negro blood when placed in prison for, as a punishment for a crime by an alien race. Number 20, we protest against segregated districts, separate public conveniences, industrial discriminations, lynching and limitations of political privileges and Negroes everywhere. These methods should be abolished and all available means should be taken to prevent a continuous of such. Oh, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> Lynching and limitations of political privilege and Negroes everywhere. And we call uh, uh, Negro citizens in any part of the world on account of race, color, and creed. And will exert all full influence and power against all such. Number 21, we protest against any punishment inflicted upon the Negro with severity as against lighter punishments inflicted upon the Negro uh, of another race for lack of offenses as an act of prejudice and injustice and should be resented by the entire race. Uh, 22, we protest against the system of education in any countries where Negroes are denied the same privileges and advantages as other races. 23, we declare it inhumane and unfair to boycott Negroes in industries and laborers in any part of the world. 24, we believe in the doctrine of the freedom of the press and we therefore emphatically protest against the suppression of Negro newspapers and periodicals in various parts of the world and call upon Negroes everywhere to employ all available means to prevent such suppression. 25, we further demand free speech universally for all men. 26, we hereby protest against the publication of scandalous and inflammatory articles by an alien press tending to create racial strife in the exhibition of picture films showing the Negro as a cannibal. 26, we believe in self-determination of all people. 28, we declare the freedom of religious worship. 29, with the help of Almighty God, we declare ourselves the sworn protectors of the honor and virtue of our women and children and pledge our lives for their protection and defense everywhere and under all circumstances of wrongs and outrageouses. 31, we, we demand the right of an unlimited and unprejudiced education for ourselves and our prosperity forever. 31, we declare that the teachings in any, in, we declare that the teachings in any school by an alien teacher to our boys and girls that the alien race is superior than the Negro race is an insult to the Negro peoples of the world. 32, where Negroes form a part of citizenry in any country and pass a civil service examination in such countries, we declare them entitled to the same consideration as other citizens as to appointments in such civil service. 33, we vigorously protest the increasingly unfair treatment accorded Negro travelers on land and sea by the agents of the employees of the railroads and steamship companies and insist for equal fare we receive equal privileges with travelers of other races. 34, we declare it is unjust in any country, state, or nation to enact laws tending to hinder and obstruct the free immigration of Negroes because of their race and color. Thirty-five, that the right of the Negro to travel uh, unmolested throughout the world be not abridged by any person or persons, and all Negroes are called upon to give fellow aid to Negroes when thus molested. 36, we declare that all Negroes are entitled to, even, to the same rights to travel over the world as other men. 37, we hereby demand that the governments of the world recognize our leaders and his representatives chosen by the race to look after the welfare of our people under such governments. 38, we demand complete control over our social institutions without interference from an alien race or races. 39, that the colors red, black, and green be the color of the Negro race. 40, resolved that the, uh, that the anthem Ethiopia, thou land of our father, be the anthem of the Negro race. 41, we believe that any limited liberty which deprives one of the complete rights and prerogatives of full citizenship is but a modified form of slavery. 42, we declare it unjust to our people and a serious impediment to the health of the race to deny to competent licensed Negro physicians the right to practice in public hospitals in communities in which he resides for no other reason than their race and color. 
43, we call upon the various governments. Um, we 43, we call upon the various governments of the world to accept and acknowledge Negro representatives who shall be sent to said governments to represent the general welfare of the Negro peoples of the world. 44, we deplore and protest against the practice of confining juvenile prisoners in prisons with adults, and we recommend that youthful prisoners be taught gainful trades under humane supervision. 45, be it further resolved that we as a race of people declare the League of Nat Nations null and void as far as the Negro is concerned, and that it seeks to deprive Negroes of their liberties. 46, we demand all men to do unto us as we would do unto you in the name of justice, and we cheerfully accord to all men all the rights we claim herein for ourselves. 47, we declare that no Negro shall engage itself in battle without first obtaining the consent of the leaders of the Negro peoples of the world, except in matters of national self-defense. 48, we protest against the practice of drafting Negroes and sending them to war with alien forces without proper training and demand in all cases that Negro soldiers be given the same training as the aliens. 49, we demand instructions given to Negro children in schools be the subject's Negro history to their benefit. 50, we demand for a free and unfettered commercial intercourse with all the Negro peoples of the world. 51, we declare that absolute freedom of the sea for all people. 52, we demand that our duly accredited representatives be given proper recognition in all leagues, conferences, conventions, and courts of inter international arbitration wherever human rights are discussed. 53, we proclaim that the 31st day of August of each year to be the international holiday to be observed by all Negroes. And 54, last but not least, we want all men to know that we shall maintain and contend for the freedom and equality with our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Thank you. Amen. Good job, good job. Good job. Good job. I say, I say. That's up, that's up. Miss Executive Secretary, isn't she bad? All 54 declarations from the top of her head. Now that sister is a serious Garvey sister. She don't take Garvey for joke. I'm the president, but she makes me look like I ain't doing no work. <laughs> Let's put our hands together for Executive Secretary, Sister Felicia! <laughs> Reciting the Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World from the top of her head. Brothers and sisters, if you want a copy of the Declaration of Rights, you can go to Division 421 table and get a copy. We probably have about 20 copies over there. So the first 20 people who go to the table, Mr. Executive Secretary, don't go no place, crowd, stay right here because she the Declaration. Y'all, y'all, okay, okay. That's the second thing has to be done by international law. You have to have a declaration. Now we're coming with the third thing that our ancestors did in the month of August, 1920. Brothers and sisters, you gotta understand that back in the 1920s, the convention was 31 days long. Our ancestors worked from August 1st to August 31st, sun up to sun down, to put this government together for us. So declaration number 39 talked about the red, black, and green flag. And brothers and sisters, when you see the red, black, and green flag, you gotta know the date it was introduced to the world. Everybody flies the red, black, and green flag who's black conscious. But do you know how it was introduced? Do you know the story behind it? 
Brothers and sisters, before August 15th, 1920, our ancestors used to have fist fights on the street with people of other races. Why would we be having fist fights with them? Because they try to tease us. They'd say, black people or Negroes, y'all are people who don't have no flag. And if you don't have no flag, that means you don't have no government. Therefore, we can do whatever we want to do to you, and there's no government that's going to come protecting you, come giving you help. So we used to have fist fights and kick some behinds. But that all stopped on August 15th, 1920, in the first Negro Peoples of the World Convention. That's when the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey revealed the red, black, and green flag to the world. And he said, this should be the flag of the Negro peoples of the world. So when you fly the red, black, and green flag, you're flying the black government flag. Did you know that? That flag was first introduced as the flag for the government of the UNIA. And because this is a world government, you go to any country in Africa, you'll see the flag flying. You go any place in Europe, Asia, South America, the Caribbean, Central America, North America, Canada, you'll see the red, black, and green flag flying. So right now, I'd like to bring in one of our youths, and he's going to lead us in the pledge to the red, black, and green. We all got to know the pledge. Don't let nobody fool you. Every flag represents a government. And our red, black, and green flag is no different. It represents the government that our ancestors formed for us. Everybody know the pledge to the Babylon flag. You know, by heart, they engraved it into us. I'm trying to get it out of me and I can't. But do you know the pledge to the red, black, and green? Well, I'm gonna bring in one of our youths, Assad, and he's going to lead us in the pledge to the red, black, and green. So brothers and sisters, put up your black fists and repeat after Brother Assad. I commit my body, mind, and spirit. I commit my body, mind, and spirit to the protection, defense, and security. To the protection, defense, and security of the red, black, and green. Of the red, black, and green. I dedicate my life to the redemption. I dedicate my life to the redemption of Mother Africa. Of Mother Africa and the liberation of our scattered black children. And the liberation of our scattered black children. I accept for myself and my descendants. I accept for myself and my descendants the teachings of universal African nationalism. The teachings of universal African nationalism. And promise that our children will be instilled. And promise that our children will be instilled with the purpose and knowledge of themselves. With the purpose and knowledge of themselves as African people. As African people. In order that the cause of our struggle. In order that the cause of our struggle will neither falter nor fail. Will neither falter nor fail. And so all black people are free. But to all black people are free. United. United. united under one God. Under one God. One aim. One aim. One destiny. One destiny. Black power. Black power. I shame. Put your hands together for our side. Now you know if the youths know the pledge to the red, black, and green, adults, you got some homework tonight. If you need a copy of the pledge, make sure you pick up one of today's program. The pledge is in the program for today. Okay, thanks. Now that was the third requirement by international law to establish a government. We did the plebiscite, that was August 1st, 1920. The second requirement is a declaration that was August 13th, 1920, and repeated today by Division 421 Executive Secretary Sister Felicia. The third requirement by international law to establish a government is you have to have a flag. Every government is known by their flag. So is our government. When you see the red, black, and green flag, you know so that represents the government that was formed by our ancestors. Now the fourth requirement, stretch it out, try, stretch it out. The fourth requirement in order to establish a government, Mr. Executive Secretary, Sister Felicia, can you please bring me a constitution? 
Now the Constitution is the fourth requirement to set up a government. Notice that this says 1918, because our ancestors worked years on this document from 1918, and it was finally adopted at the first Negro Peoples of the World Convention in August 1920. Today we have copies of the Constitution for you. The original Constitution that Marcus Garvey and our ancestors established. We only have a limited amount, so all who join the UNIA as an active member receives a Constitution. It's only $3 a month for the upkeep of the government. So brothers and sisters, this is international law we're talking about. The UNIA is not registered on the United States. But the UNIA is a government just like the United States government or any other government in the world. The Constitution, you gotta know this. Because inside of this book is the rules that govern our people. Today the Constitution is being updated as I speak. So brothers and sisters, you gotta jump in. You gotta get a copy of the Constitution, read it and know it, and we gotta live by it. We have the right, and nobody can stop us from building in our government, our own government. As long as we don't break the laws of our host country, we have the right to establish our own government, brothers and sisters. And the government has already been established, we just have to build it. So we don't, have to, we don't have to form the government. Our ancestors did that. And by international law, when something's created by law, it exists forever, unless the people who formed it dissolved it. And there was never any dissolvement of our government. So now we're in our 11th administration. There's been 11 president generals for the black government. Marcus Garvey was the first. Marcus Garvey was the first president general in the black government. The highest person is not called a president, but is called a president general. So Marcus Garvey, he served as president general from 1920 to 1940. Our current president general is the Honorable Michael Duncan, who got elected in August 2016 in New York. The next election for the UNIA is 1920. Brothers and sisters, Atlanta Division 421 hosted the first black government convention in Georgia, and that was in 2012, the 55th International Convention. And we're gonna bring another convention back here to Georgia within the next five years. So look out for that. So the Constitution is available over there but you have to join the UNIA to get one. Give thanks, sisters. Now, the fifth requirement by international law, do you remember them? The first one is the plebiscite, August 1st, 1920. The second is the Declaration of Rights of Negro Peoples of the World. The third is the flag. The fourth is the Constitution. Now, the fifth requirement by international law that is the recognition from other governments. You cannot form a government unless the existing governments accept you. And the UNIA government, according to Dr. Tony Martin, was recognized by over 40 countries in the 1920s. Recognition of other governments in the 1920s. Dr. Tony Martin documented over 40 countries that we had embassy offices in. And you can't have an embassy office in a country unless you're a government. So there was over 40 different countries that recognized the UNIA. Okay. And brothers and sisters, up until recently, in 2012, the American government recognized the UNIA again in 2012. And this was at the dual citizenship program held in Washington, D.C. by the Congressional Black Caucus 
where the UNIA government presented its dual citizenship program and there was a representative from the United States States um, State Embassy Ambassador, United States Ambassador who gave well wishes in 2012 to the UNIA government. So after our ancestors did those five requirements in August 1920, they worked 31 days, sun up, sun down. So at the end of August 1920, they completed all the requirements by international law to establish the government. So August 31st became our independent state. Not July 4th. August 31st is Black People's Independence Day. And this day became International African Independence Day. Because no matter where you were in the world, you could join the UNIA and get independence from your colonizer's government. So brothers and sisters, we want to thank you for being part of this reenactment today. And this is the first time it has ever happened in this century. And you all are witness to history, to our story. So let's put our hands together for Marcus Garvey! We love Marcus Garvey! Thank you so much for that reenactment. I hope you all learned something from it. This is our story. This is our history. And that's why you can get your black government ID. Because our ancestors established the government. We just have to build it. So I ask you, what's in your wallet? You got Babylon ID in your wallet or the black government ID in your wallet? In my wallet is my black government ID. Official ID. You can use it for any purpose that you need identification for. The only two things you cannot use it for is a driver's license and a passport. But everything else, it's official ID. So brothers and sisters, you make sure that in your wallet or in your pocketbook is your black government ID. Because if you don't have your black government ID, you're not exercising your human rights. This is our human rights to give ourselves our own identification. Why is it that we're conscious today, but yet our identification is still given to us by an alien race? The only reason that exists is because we're not exercising our human rights. We don't know that we have our own government that we gotta build. Marcus Garvey's God's gift to the black man. He said, up your mighty race, we can accomplish what we can. In Bonn in Jamaica, in the Paris St. Anne, in travel the world to many nations, and every place in go blacks under degradation. You say, where is the black man kingdom? Where is his nation? We are gonna set it, we are gonna build it, we are gonna set the foundation. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Race first. Black power. Black power. Race first. Black power. Race first. Black power. No, brothers and sisters, we got a, a lot more still happening tonight. We still have the presentation from the black organizations because we cannot have Marcus Garvey Day unless all of us take part. This is not just for people who might be officers in the UNIA or active members. It's for all African people. So next, brothers and sisters. Okay. Let's put our hands together for our second vice president of the UNIA local division, Brother Jonathan, and he's going to introduce our next presenters. Race first. Race first, black power. 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 Race